Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 AI bot cast. We have got ourselves what should be a good one here, as it's uh, gonna be one of the fan favorites, I'd say, at this point in the botting scene. It's gonna be, oh, it's been a while since I cast it. It's gonna be Eris. Iris? I'm, <laughs> I'm always going to pronounce that one wrong, I think. But anyway, in the bottom right, we have got Xena, a uh, bot that I cast in my previous match. Uh, the first one that first game that I've cast in a while, and it was definitely a really good one. So I thought, we'll just cast the next game. That was sent in by one of those bot authors, so always good to see that there's bot authors wanting their bots to be cast. And yeah, we Xena in the previous match actually played Terran, so that's a pretty big sign of confidence of a lot of love put into a bot if it's got two races under its belt at least. We'll have to wait and see if it's got a Zerg strategy or not, but when it comes to playing in things like the ProBots tournament, uh, having multiple races under your belt can really throw your opponents for a loop. If uh, as far as like trying to snipe your opponent goes that sort of thing so yeah ladies and gentlemen before we get too f too further into this one go ahead and hit that like button subscribe if you have not and hit that bell icon get notified whenever i put up a new video a new post or go live uh consider joining the discord always a good time in there and become a youtube member if you want to support the channel as uh, we're we're aiming for ten, and I think there's currently eight of you guys, so that is the best way to support the channel. And yeah, leave a comment down below. The, the most important thing is to say more bots in the comments if you want to see more of these bots. We've got a third base on the way up for Eris, a couple of queens on the way, just doing Zerg things, just Zerg things. All the while, though, Xena is looking to put the pressure on. <coughs> Bringing out a little bit of the fromage, actually. Eris has been scouting out with its drone, but it has yet to see this. It sh oh no, it turns the drone around. Okay, it actually swaps the drone with the lings now that the lings are out. That's actually really impressive. But oh, the ling turns around too. Oh dear. Uh, Xena going for a proxy void ray. We saw at the start of the game. Proxy void 12 and 16. Or 12 and 17, pardon me. So, a pretty decent win rate, that's for sure. Or at least it says 66%. Now, Lings are running all over the place, they're scouting out, they see no base. But, Xena has already got a Void Ray on the way, another one's on the way up. And it's just tossing down shield batteries at this point, so the Void engaging the Queens pulls out while it's still got a little bit of shield. It's gonna go back, get more energy on those shields go back in engage rinse and repeat you guys get the idea this is one of the more difficult cheeses to hold now of course it's also a difficult cheese i imagine to program a bot to execute but uh things are looking a little bit worrisome for eris here as the void rays down there's two of them they can just melt these queens a lot quicker two voids can take on a queen and then, of course, the injured ones can retreat. So Eris has got to be pumping out these queens. Got to get something done. But Xena's strategy is looking pretty good. It had the Zealot just mass, mass shield batteries. More than you'd normally build, I think, as, uh, as a Protoss player. And now we see in go the Void Ray is going to pop that Prismatic Alignment. There is three queens here. However, they are off creep, so they cannot transfuse. And Eris hasn't spread creep between its bases. At least they are transfusing when they get back on creep, but yeah, Eris is just making drones. It's making like one or two queens at a time, but that is not enough now that it's gonna be three queens against three void rays. But the void rays actually retreat, sensing something's a little bit off there. They all pull back. Queens engaging, shooting these void rays, transfuses are being used. So it looks like Eris is doing a good job holding us so far, popping those transfuses, pushing back Xena. Xena has got basically unlimited batteries. It's like an overlord gonna get shot by that stalker, but 
the void rate count is growing. The queen count really is in. It looks like one of these queens may go down. The injured ones are pulling back, but not enough there. If if Eris popped down a tumor here, it would be doing so, so much better. But instead, it looks like it's going to lose yet another queen. And I mean, it's what, five void rays? I don't know, four. Working on the fifth void ray. And uh, Eris has got up a pretty good economy. It's doing almost that alpha star thing, which it just ignores whatever's going on and expands and drones. But that only gets you so far. We've got a lair now on the way. I mean, potentially we could see a Spire or a Hydra let's get into counter this. This doesn't seem like a fine-tuned response by Eris. It's just playing playing pretty safe. Drones are now burrowing in the main. The Queens, however, are not burrowing to survive the Void when they could potentially do that. And pretty much all the Queens are now dead at this point, so the main base will be uncontested. Looks like that Lair's finishing up. Is there going to be a Spire or anything else started? I mean, it kind of depends wherever there's a Hydralist den started. It is at the third base, so that's a big deal. And with Eris taking more and more bases, uh, it's going to be a lot of work for Xena to clean up the main, to clean up the natural, and then to get to that third base. So, I mean, Eris might have a chance here. However, it's losing a lot of Void Rays. The drones are burrowed and probably will stay there for a long time. Lings aren't really doing too much, seeing as how... Yeah, there's nothing really they can do. They're not counterattacking. They're not engaging the Zealot behind the Thousand Shield batteries. Eris does have that good redundancy. It's replacing all the Overlords. We'll see where it's rallying them, if it has a spot or not. Uh, looks like it just leaves them where they are. There we go, but now Hydras are on the way, and Hydras deal a lot of damage to Void Rays. It's not, it's not often with a cheese like this that the game goes this long. Uh per se, because usually it's like, oh, the Zerg's like, oh, I lost all my queens, that's game over, but Eris is like, nope, I can do it, I can just start making Hydras off my still three-base economy against this one-base cheesy, bloody Protoss. And so, a really good response from it, from Eris, seeing why it is one of the top Zerg bots, a lot of redundancy, not just melting, like, it's got all these drones stuck underground, which is unfortunate still, as that is, like, a lot of drones. Hydras are now coming out. Uh, unfortunately, they're not pooling well enough. Uh, looks like a spore starts. Actually, a lot of spores are starting, interestingly enough. Looks like it's just uh, the base mechanics are starting a couple at each base, but they might help. Hydras, they're on the way. We've got that group mines on the way. That will help out, too. The problem is, if Eris does fight before it really gets the chance, that before it really pools up enough, that will be a problem. But there we go. Voidrays are starting to be pushed back. There's a spore, that's a big deal. Voyager is flying over the spore, just gonna elect to melt it right away. A couple more hydras are being produced. Stalkers attacked on the other side of the map. They're gonna be shut down. As long as there's drones in burrow and get back to work right away, that's real important, as that is a large chunk to the economy that's currently functioning as these drones are trying to get back to Zerg civilization, but just not happening. We see another hatchery getting started up for Eris. In a very odd spot. Uh, Lings danced around all over the place. More high, like another Hydra pops out, but it looks like Eris just might not have what it takes. Working on trying to get a great holdout. Getting that Groove Spines, increasing the attack range against the Voidrays is a big deal, but I think it looks like that Xena might have just had, had a little bit too much success with this build here. Eris is down to two Hydralisks. I mean, all these drones being caught in the main has been a big, big deal. If it, like, had some sort of behavior, I mean, this would be a nightmare to program for Eris. And I don't think it's probably worth the bot author's time for this situation. I mean, maybe you could set a thing to try and let the drones escape. Like, have a, like, oh, my hydras, my units are engaging, run the drones out. And they're actually going right now. We'll see if they're just going to reburrow and panic. Yes, they do. See, that's the problem. Uh, Hydralis Den now under fire. I think if that goes down, that's probably going to be game. And it looks like, yeah, Xena, one base wandering it up with Protoss. Incredibly strong build, incredibly hard to hold. I will say that Eris tried and almost had success holding this, which was incredibly impressive, but... Uh, 
in the end, it was just too, too much. As, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any way that Eris can come back. Xena showing us that the bot authors have really put a lot of thought into the strategies that it chooses. Eris just showing us how well-rounded it is. I'm curious to see if the bot authors adjust for this at all. If, say, even the map is a factor for how things change. And, uh, yeah, Eris's Lings didn't really counterattack this game. They definitely could have. Xena's actually expanding, which is impressive. Uh, but yeah. Eris, uh, I mean, it's got a lot of drones still sitting in the ground, unfortunately. That really was the big loss there. That's like 24, almost 30 drones. So like well over half its drones for a lot of the game just sitting in the ground. There's a few mining there. Uh... Another Hydra Den being started at the fourth base, but pretty sure this one's over. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button if you haven't already. Consider subscribing, join the Discord. And I will say that this was a really great game because I was wondering whether Eris was going to be able to pull off the hold, but in the end it wasn't quite able to. Uh, however, in a lot of cases with this cheese, it's almost just like, Oh, game's over. Cur clearly, they're not going to hold, but Eris, ha Eris had me wondering, so that's always great to see. Heavily supply blocked, however. Really nothing to stop these 13 void rays. No counterattacks going down with the Lings. If the Lings had... I mean, there is the battery and the stalker, so getting through wouldn't have been too likely. But it might have been nice. It's not like the Lings were going to do anything else. Once again, that's an incredibly difficult thing to program, to be like, oh yeah, this is the cheese that's happening. But, anyway. We see Xena now looking for bases, fanning those void rays out. Found the last base, and that is going to be it. The Lings actually do engage now, which is interesting.